everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play. I'm here with Brian Steele Hello. for Cool Money or Not, and we're going to be showing you guys Wrath of Kings today, um, the new two player starter set, which is called the Battle at Ravenswood. Now, Wrath of Kings um, is a wonderful sort of I guess company level. It's like between a skirmish game and a company level like mass battle game, uh, set in a fantasy universe where an ancient king has died uh, and his scion children are fighting basically for control of the world. Uh, it features House Garizzi, which is a double dealing bunch of vampires and werewolves from Teloria uh, that have basically made a pact with the gift, which is this sort of inexplicable power that gifts vampirism and, and lycanthropy onto people. Um, and that's become the nobility of that house. Uh, and then the Nazir, who are more of a noble martial clan that have made deals with elemental powers. And they have these infused masks that basically dictate what their jobs are that slowly transform them into avatars of the elemental demon that's sort of trapped inside. So. The Battle of Ravenswood is a clash between those two. Um, if you want, there's two great things you can do. You can follow on the rules of the game. We'll give you a brief description of them. Um, but they're free online, so there'll be links in the description below on the Wrath of Kings website. Um, and you can actually see all these rules for free along with all the cards for what we're using um, and walk through the game with us. And there's also a EPUB novel or PDF novel you can download that gives you the backstory for this battle um, as well as why the Wrath of Kings sort of like world is kicked into war. Yeah. The ancient king has died, his children are all kind of like vying for power. And I'm, I'm not going to lie, the army I'm doing, Garitzi, they're, they're the cause of all the trouble. Like, we, we literally, we literally start <laughs> they, they World the War, pot. We, pot. we start yeah. World War Wrath of Kings. Like, it's, it's, it's bad. And Nasia does not like us because they're onto us and they are, they are, are basically not taking any of our business. So, um, we're going to give you a brief walk through the game. We'll show you the models from the star set. We've got the beautiful studio miniatures here from um, Kumini or not. We're doing this at Kumini Expo 2017. So, let's take a look at the miniatures, walk you through the rules, and we'll get started right now. So here's what we're talking about today, the Honor and Treachery Battle at Ravenwood starter sets. Um, and this is the contents. You're going to get a Garitzi Force, which is a Scores of Alpha, three Scores of Skirmishers, which are infantry, uh, a Scourge Hound, which is this uh, Lady Wolf in the back here, and then a Shield Breaker, which is this big, heavily armored guy. For the Garitzi, so six models in the Garitzi. Um, and then on the other side, you're going to get the Nazir. You get an uh, uh, Ashman Hakar, six Ashmen, which is the basic line infantry. You get a, um, what's it called, Longhorn, which is this guy right here with a shield, it's like a bull charge guy. And then a Rathor, which is kind of a cross, you know, wizard and a fighter, a big monster here. And ironically, everyone in this shot is a human being, but the different powers uh, in Wrath of Kings that you kind of align yourself with transform you into monsters. So like, the gift has made all these people werewolves, and the masks that these guys wear are slowly turning them into elemental monsters. So what's funny is when you leave the military in the Nazir, you turn back into your regular human. So like you, you give back your mask and you stop being this like unstoppable killing machine. So the longer you're in the military, the more giant and elementally demony monster you turn into. Now what you also get is you're gonna get some card scenery, some measuring tapes, so some walls, little fountainy uh, idol over here, some hedges uh, and a swamp so you can get started if you don't have a terrain of your own and you get some measuring rules which we'll use today. You get your cards, which we'll go through the anatomy of a card in a minute for the Nazir and for the Garitzi, and then you get some wound counters, these little hearts here, uh, and some D10s, it's a D10 based game. <clears throat> you're also gonna get your starter rules here, which are honestly all you need to get started. Um, it's going to go through the anatomy of the card and how you can do things during the game round. So this literally is one sheet right here is the basic core mechanics of the game. And the game becomes fascinating the more, the more different troop types you mix and match to do stuff. And then finally you get a tutorial scenario, which is what we're going to do for um, the, uh, the gameplay that you're going to actually see here. So on each side, um, what we have is we have basic force construction. So um, force construction in this game, if you're picking an army, for a typical game, the smallest size game is called a patrol, and you get ranks of stuff. It's almost like a point-free system. You have slots that you fill in instead. In a patrol, you can have two ranks of leaders, you can have 12 ranks of infantry, and then two ranks of specialists. And what that gives you is you can pick any cards that have those ranks. Um, and when you look at a card, for the enemy of a card, at the back here, rank, and then base size, and then their actual size, that's important for abilities and stuff. And then deployment zone, um, and we'll talk about deployment zones later. But um, these guys are, for the most part, uh, the, uh, the scores is over here, which we'll look at first, rank two infantry, and that's why you get less of them. So you're getting six ranks of infantry here with the three skirmishers, and each of these sides is about half of a patrol, 
with an extra, you'll get extra specialists basically. So if you wanted to buy two of this box with a friend, you'd get a Garitzi Patrol and you'd get a um, Nazir Patrol if you swapped sides. So the starter set's about half a patrol of each, which gets you ready to rock and roll. You can add boxes to it to make a patrol if you want. The next one is when you get to a Skirmish, and a Skirmish is um, three ranks of leaders, and then you get two ranks, sorry, uh, 18 ranks of infantry, two ranks of specialists, and you get two options of either one more rank of specialist or three more ranks of infantry. So you get some flex in your force construction at that point, um, unless you add more things. So the bigger your rank is, usually the more wounds you have and stuff, uh, and the bigger a footprint you have in the battlefield. So you have more elite force here with the Scorzes, and a more infantry heavy force here with the Ashmen. So let's do the anatomy of a card. Um, the basic core mechanics of the game are two things. You get a maneuver and an action whenever you do something. And your cards basically reflect that. So the front, you've got your faction logo, so this is House Garitzi. Your rank, so two bars means rank two your defensive track right here, which we'll explain when we explain attacks, and then your basic stats. This is your move stats, your maneuver. So when you make a maneuver, that's how many inches you go. So seven in the case of Escorza. You get six uh, will. So your will is kind of like your combined leadership and magic stats. Whenever you do anything, it's your mental prowess. You usually make a will check. You're trying to roll equal to or under that on a d10. This is your resistance, which is how many hits it takes to cause a wound on you. And then finally, this is your hit points, which is how many wounds you can take. Um, and so for this guy, for every hit he takes, he takes one wound, but he can take two wounds before he's removed as a casualty. We'll talk about this up here later, which is the damage track when we make attacks. But suffice it to say, that's a D10 roll. So whenever someone attacks you, when they get a dice result of a D10, you look it up and see what it is. And each of these symbols, you'll memorize them pretty quickly, is a different result. So this is a backlash, little magical star here, which means if someone hits you with a magic attack and they roll that, they get hit with their own magic attack potentially, uh, can do some damage, interact with some things. The arrows are all dodges, so anything that uh, affects dodges will affect that, um, otherwise it's a miss. The little circly thing there is a armor hit, so that's your armor, um, and you, you can have certain abilities that crack armor. So the shield breaker here, for instance, he turns the first armor into one of these lightning bolts on your track, which is a strike, and that means it's a point of damage against resistance to try and cause wounds. And then finally, the skull is an overpower, and overpower means you do two hits instead of one when you get that result on a die roll. Um, but we'll, again, we'll show you how that works when we actually start making attacks. And in the back here, you have your name, your keyword, so for instance, this one's Scorza, and that'll be important later for group activations. What you are, it's either a leader, infantry, or um, a specialist. And then your rank, your base size, your actual size, which is important for movement and stuff, uh, and then your deployment zone. So deployment zones go A through D, and they are all 5-inch increments. So A is 5 inches from your table edge, B is 10 inches, C is 15, and D is 20 inches potentially up into the, the deployment area. Um, and then finally, you've got your actual attack values. Um, and for every time you make an action, you can do all kinds of things. Uh, but mostly, the generic thing you'll be doing is an attack. So he has an attack called Brutal Savagery. It's melee. Uh, it's range zero, which means it's in base to base. Uh, and it rolls two d10s to make the attack. So every time he makes the attack, it rolls two d10s, and then you look up the results on a damage track and see what happens. Finally, you have these abilities. This guy, the first time he uh, kills an enemy model, he can move two inches and perform a one-die melee attack. So he's got this cool little boop thing where he kills somebody, he walks over, and then he makes an additional attack. And then he has follow-through. He replaces the first block, which is an X in the defender's chart, with a strike. So that's going to be really important against the Ashmen. Um, not the Ashman, actually, sorry, the Ashman Hakar, who's got a 7 is a block, which means he'll get hit instead of on an 8, 9, 10, on a 7, 8, 9, 10 by the Scorzes. The other things you've got is you've got special abilities. So, for instance, he's a skirmisher. During free movement, this model may pass through friendly models as long as they can move, or they don't end on their base. And Stalker, they ignore disengaging costs and can engage models after disengaging. Because normally to break free of a melee, it's going to cost you inches of movement. They don't have to do that. <laughs> so, uh, And they can also engage new models, because normally when you break off base to base from somebody, you can't start a new melee afterwards. So the Scorzes are all about super fast lightning attacks um, using their special abilities to do that. That's the basic one I card, but there's one more kind of card we need to look at, which is leaders and specialists. Or two more hips of cards, I guess. Leaders have additional rules. They have command abilities. Um, and there's always two. There's an Inspire. Um, if this model kills an enemy model, it may sprint at the end of its activation. Anybody who group activates with him, which we'll talk about during the game, will get that as an ability during that activation. And then a Training, all friendly models gain fast. Training is, if that guy's your army general, which in this course he will be because he's the only leader I have, they get uh, his fast skill, which means when they sprint, which is an action that you can take, he'll move six instead of four inches. So normally you maneuver whatever your maneuver stat is, and then as your second action, you can take a sprint, a generic sprint is four inches. These guys get six because their thing is a need for speed. Now, the 
uh, specialist, the Scourge Hound and the Shield Breaker, can also have some special abilities that'll take place during the game. Melee attacks just like a normal model. But you'll notice they don't have a keyword, and that means they can't activate with their friends. Leaders can pull extra models into activations with them by having the same keyword. So the Alpha and the three scores of Skirmishers can all do stuff together, whereas the Scourge Hound and the Shield Breaker are gonna have to activate on their own. So I'm gonna have potentially one, two, three activations during my turn, and my opponent is gonna have one, two, because the Hakar can't command all these guys at the same time because of the game size, three, four for the, uh, the big uh, specialist he's got in his army. And that's our basic walkthrough of what comes in the box. So let's take a look at the tutorial scenario. So the big point of this game is morale. And morale is basically a race to zero. You start with morale equal to the number of models you have divided by three plus the ranks of um, leaders in your army. So I have six models divided by three, that's two. And I have one rank of leader, which means I have a total morale of three. There's two, four, six, seven, eight, nine divided by three. Um, and then they would have a one rank leader as well, which means they'd actually have morale of four normally, but the tutorial is just going to give us the same morale uh, to play with. And that's going to mean that the first one to hit zero loses the game. Now you take morale damage for every three models that get killed. So if you kill three models during a turn, you lose a morale. Um, and then you also take morale damage when one of your leaders dies, equal to his rank. So losing the alpha and losing the hakar will also cost us points. Last thing you have to pick, and they're picked for us in this scenario, is your motivations. Every faction has access to two types of motivation. So for instance, my faction, Garizzi, are usually using intrigue and treachery as their motivations. And it's three different ones for each type. So you have an access to a pool of six motivations. And they're basically additional ways to cause morale damage. So the one that Gritzy's gonna get in the tutorial scenario is assassination. For this mission, the Gritzy force has been tasked with killing the enemy Hakar. If this model is killed, the Asia force loses an additional morale for two total morale lost. So if you kill the Hakar, he's gonna drop to one. So if I basically kill the Hakar and two more models in this game, the Gritzy will win because they've done an assassination. Prove your might, Nazir. For the specialist, Nazir force will prove its might by destroying the so-called specialist of the Gritzy, proving their training and skill to be superior. The Nazirs uh, kill either the Scourge Hound or the Shield Breaker specialist. The Gritzy lose an additional morale. Note that the Gritzy force can only lose one additional morale from this motivation. So either of these two guys dying will be an additional morale, which means that um, if he kills my leader and one of the specialists, uh, I'm very close to losing the game. If I lose my leader, a specialist, and one more model, again, three models, the game will be over for the nature. So we're going to dice off four deployments and go back and forth deploying by zone. So I got a four, you get a seven, which means you get to go first. Um, and you will then uh, get to... So the other thing that's interesting for these initiative rolls is we would normally add the difference in our current morale to the roll to see who goes first. So once you're down in morale, you're actually able to gain activations. Now we deploy um, our deployment zones. My lowest deployment zone is gonna be B, which is all of my guys. Your lowest deployment zone, I don't think you have any A's. I don't have any A's, I've got, a, I've got three B's and a C. All right, so your B's are gonna have to go down before my B's, which means I get to see where they go. That's a 10 inch deployment zone, so basically the length of that stick is how far down they can be. Now you're trying to kill my specialists, I'm trying to kill your Hakar. Leadership is super important. Uh, leadership is gonna be four in this uh, scenario, and leadership is the number of models you can group activate, including the leader model if they so wish to do it, inside the bubble of a leader. All of these B deployments are done, so I'm gonna make all of my B deployments within 10 inches. All right, so we've got a Scourge Hound uh, with her boyfriend, the Shield Breaker, uh, and then we've got over here my pack, which is gonna be my alpha and my one, two, three, um, what should I call it? Scores of skirmishers. You've got everything down except for the Longhorn, who goes up to deployment C, which is 15 inches. Yep, so, so five more inches up from them. And, and you are deployed. You don't have anybody with D, which would be way out here. Yeah, which would be way out into the no man's land, basically. So we're going to dice off now for initiative on turn one and start activating. Now, what's important in this game is you do not necessarily get to activate all your models. So once your enemy is done activating all of his models, you get one more activation and then you're finished. So picking who goes first can be really important. So I'm gonna get a two, which is a bad roll. I also have a two. All right, so we're gonna roll again. Seven. And a 10. And a 10, so you get to go first. Um, or you can make me go first, but I doubt you'd wanna do that. <laughs> no, I'm definitely, I'm definitely gonna start this, uh, this process off. All right, so who's gonna activate? Uh, we'll have the Rathor go. Actually, no, we're gonna go ahead and do a combined activation. Sure. The Hakar is going to tell these three, because they're all within four inches of him, or within his six inches, six inches yeah. uh, and up to four models. He's not going to go with them, though. He's actually just going to tell them to go. Okay, so they first make a maneuver, and they all do their maneuvers before they do their actions. And their maneuver, I believe, is six? Seven. Seven. So they get to run forward seven each. And when you group activate, you do have to do maneuver all and then action all, which means you get to do a little bit like... Um, uh, a squad movement here as opposed to going separately. And this is usually the only time when you would do 
movements before doing actions. Right. Now, they don't have any real action to be able to take, like, the, you know, there's no one to attack, so they'll right. go ahead and sprint. And the sprint is four inches normally for a standard model. Of course, my guys have fast from their training. What's the training on the Hakkar that your army the gets? The training on the Hakkar is if this model is engaged an enemy, if this model engaged an enemy, this activation and would end their activation unengaged, it may move three inches toward the nearest enemy. Cool. So they get a so little sprint. They get a little kind of burst forward if they manage to run up, engage somebody, hopefully kill them. That's and right. Then and they're also, because they share a keyword with him right now, getting his inspiration. It's probably not relevant, because I think it has something to do with when they're in melee. Yeah, but they're, his inspiration is if this model begins its activation engaged, its melee attack gets an extra die. Nice, so they get two dice instead of one, which is awesome. It puts them on par, even though they're little rank one infantry with my scores. So they're done their activation, now it's over to me. I'm gonna have my Scourge Hound go. Now she has an ability called Follow Me, which is why she teams up so well with this guy. She makes two will tests, and for each one she passes, a model within four can move four inches. Um, basically after, or before she makes her action. So she's will six, so I roll two dice. I roll a six and a 10, so I pass one, fail one, but that means the Scourge, I need to try and pass one. The Scourge Hound can move up, or, or sorry, the Shield Breaker can move up four, and then she'll make her seven inch maneuver up to here behind this thread, and then she's gonna sprint because she sprints six, because I have the fast training for my general. Now, I know you're trying to kill her, but she's super excited to come and try and kill you first. Over to you for your activation. All right, we'll have the Hakar join this gr little group and have do another combined activation. And I know no one's in range, so we'll go ahead and do that whole move and sprint thing. However, still have to move everybody in. In order, in yeah. Order. So it's gonna be a seven inch advance for each one. So it'll be a seven, seven, he's gonna go wide. And the Hakar is gonna go kinda in the middle this time because I still wanna maybe next turn be able to send yeah. these guys. Because he has a six inch command bubble, but all those guys are still gonna be at the end of your turn. And then they will sprint. And they'll go four, so they can just so kinda she's just leapfrog gonna up. Go up here. Try and stay safe. Get ready for action. Sounds good. All right, so we're gonna group activate now with the Alpha, and he's gonna pull all of his friends in with him, so they're all within six of him. He has a rule called Pack Tactics, too, for the bigger models. His leadership influence area is nine inches, so he can actually pull guys from really far away. But they'll all do their advances, which is seven, and just toe the line, moving forward, getting themselves relevant, and then, because he's fast, do their six-inch sprints and move forward to try and get this party started. Now, I know you go seven, so I wanna stay just outside of seven. Ah, what the heck, let's just go into seven. Let's just hope we get initiative. <laughs> and go and moi to some guys, like so. I have one activation left, you have two activations left, so we're gonna both get to completely activate because you want initiative, but if you hadn't want initiative, I'd probably be leaving one of your guys behind this turn, so go ahead. All right, we're gonna go ahead and have the Wrath Orgo. Well, although he looks like a big giant bison guy, he's actually a shaman, he's, yep. a, he's a magician. He shoots lightning bolts out of his lightning stick. Yeah, so he is gonna go forward six, which is his maneuver speed. And now I've got uh, a magic attack that's an eight inch range, but I know that's I'm outside. Yep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna sprint and go hide behind this wall. And there we go. It's my last specialist, which is gonna be Mr. Shieldbreaker. He's gonna try and party with your Longhorn. So he's gonna go and he's gonna make a five inch advance. And this is why the pull uh, ability is so key on him because he goes five only when he walks, and then he's gonna go another six with his sprint, and whoop, and just sprint around the corner, like so. Mr. Longhorn. All right, so Longhorn has his maneuver of seven. So we'll go my seven. I'm gonna take your, uh, take your challenge. And he has a, uh, a special ability that he can do uh, as an action to clear a path, but you've got to have an enemy within two inches. That's right. So, however, so here's the thing. The way clear a path works is enemies within two inches of this model are forced three inches away in the order of this model's choosing. Well, there are no one for me to push. This model may then move up to four inches and perform one of its melee attacks. So I can still do so that part. I can still part. do that part, because it doesn't yep. say it has to be on one of those models. So you're going to head up. So I'm going to head up. And make a melee attack. Make a melee now, attack. I have a special rule called I'm scary like crazy, uh, intimidating presence. You have to make a will check, and for each one that you fail, there's only one that you have to make, you will lose um, a, uh, a dice from your attack pool. So your will is five, so, so you have five or less. I have five or less to keep my normal set of dice. And you fail, so you're going to lose a die. Now I start with three. So you're going to get two now so I get with two. your melee attacks. And you've got some stuff here. So you've got Sundering One, which will turn my highest armor, which is going to be a seven, into a strike. 
And, and I then have unrelating, which would turn one of your dodges. Which I don't have. Don't any. have any. So, so you're gonna roll. Unrelenting is not gonna matter. Two dice on my defense grid, and we'll see how many hits you get. So you got double overpower. <laughs> okay. Well, all right then. So you get two double skulls, which, which is a total is of four hits. four hits. I'm resistance one, which is gonna be four wounds. I only have three, and you annihilate this guy in one go. Um, and that means that I'm down to morale and a second morale because you killed one of my specialists because you're showing them your martial oh, prowess. Oh, the mission, yes. Which means that I'm a single morale left for the next turn. But the cool thing is now I get plus two to my initiative roll. We're done the turn, everyone's activated, but because I'm down to one morale to your three, I get plus two to this dice roll to see who goes first. Correct. And that's going to be well, relevant. It's totally relevant. Because you won, but I'm going to get a five with my modifier, which means I get to activate a model first. That means it's scoring time. So we're going to have a group activation with my alpha, and he's going to start going and trying to murder your dudes. Um, so he's going to go, and he's going to go seven. And I put myself within seven this turn. I just need to go actually aim the other way. And go and melee this guy. And he's going to pull this guy with him into base to base, and this guy with him into base to base. And they're gonna do what's called an assist action and give the alpha an extra die. So, um, he's gonna have her go as well. She's just gonna advance seven inches this way because she can't quite make it into melee. Off to do the second action, an assist is a melee action, which means that she won't do anything, um, but these guys will do the same thing. So the scores of Alpha is gonna attack your little uh, Ash Man there with three dice, and he's gonna get two bonus dice from the two assists from his friend who are in base to base with him. Actually, sorry, he, yeah, he'll get assist dice, not yeah. gang up dice, because right. we're not combining them. Because what you can also do is multiple guys in base to base with the same guy can combine their dice into one dice pool. So I get two more dice, if I can borrow them from you, Oh, yep, sorry. That's okay. And we'll see what we got. Now, I have Unrelenting, which means that I will actually get, or sorry, Fall Through, rather, which means I turn a block into a strike, but I don't think you have any blocks on I, your... I do not have any blocks. Thing. And it is important to say, or to let you know, that... We're fighting one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we're fighting one-on-one, -on -one, but I have a reaction of counterattack. That's right. Once per attack, if you if you generate any of my parries, so one, two, or three, and do not kill me, like, so if the rest of your dice murder me, it's irrelevant. I can actually get to quickly swing back. That's right, so let's see what happens. I'm going to get a nine, which is a strike, a seven, which is a strike, and a seven, which is a strike, but I did also get a four and a six, which are a dodge, a dodge and a dodge. A dodge. So no so, parries. However, three hits with my resilience of one and one hit point is way enough to- To murderize, murder that's right. Gentleman. So now what happens is I get to do my pack tactics, which is a follow through. Now, that means I move forward, whoop, two inches, and so do these guys, because they participated. Now, I don't think he's gonna get to make it, because he's not, nope, he's not in range, but he'll just move two inches anyway, going this way, and make a one dice swing. So the alpha gets to make a one dice swing against him. Okay. Which is a two, which is a parry, which so you get to hit me back. So now I get to swing back with my parry. Uh, it is just a single die swing. We're fighting one-on-one -on -one, though. Do you get the bonus die for that? Uh, I get the duelist. While this model is engaged with one enemy and no other friendly model is engaging the same enemy, which he isn't, uh, I gain offensive mastery one, which means I get an extra die. Oops. And then I get to drop, drop That's right. the die of my choice. And so the alpha's grid, you'll hit me on a seven. And you get a nine. Obviously, I'll get rid of the four. That's right, get rid of the dodge. And that means that I take a strike, which is a wound, because I've only got a resistance of one. So, uh, at the end of his action, he gets to make a free sprint. Uh, and he has skirmisher, which means he's going to sprint back six. Uh, did this one And party over here. He'll resolve it now. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I finished his activation. And then the other guy, whoops, right here is gonna go, and he hits with one die on a five. It's just a dodge. Just a dodge, but he also gets to make a sprint. And they all count as having killed somebody. So she'll sprint as well because she assisted that previous action. So she's gonna go backwards to here and he's gonna go backwards to here. Uh, just like the other ones, they're disengaging for free because they're all skirmishers, which means they don't have to pay any kind of movement cost to do so. So they go in, they kill something, they go out. We didn't kill as much as we wanted, but we did some murder. And they've all activated now, so it's over to you. All right, so I think the Hakar and I'm actually gonna have these three go. Okay. So this one's gonna come over here. Go fight. Go deal with that. Uh, the movement on Ashman Hakar is seven. So she'll make it. All right. Roar. And she's wrapping around. And gonna go assist. They're gonna go give extra dice. <laughs> yeah. Cheer her on. Ow. 
Because it actually doesn't matter if they fight me or they go into base to base, because they're not duelisting if they're not one on one. So three on one, they're only getting one dice anyway, which means it's better for them to support her well, than to all try and gang up. And also, the Hakar is not a duelist. The Hakar right. is just a straight up, she, she fights everyone. She, she murders stuff, that's right. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, start. The, we'll do the little one die attack from my swordsman over here, get that that's out good. of the way. Fighting my skirmisher. He is a duelist. So Two dice because he's fighting one on one, and you're gonna get an overpower and a seven. So the overpower alone is gonna cause two wounds. My resistance is only one, and that's gonna kill that skirmisher. But the seven will do an additional strike. I took three wounds, and he's just well, dead. Well, I would have to drop the seven. Oh, that's right, because you yeah. dropped that. That's right, you dropped the highest one yeah. from offensive mastery. Um, and so he's dead, and you don't get anything that procs off killing me. So it's gonna go over here, and you're gonna fight my scourge hound, right. and she has two dice. Plus two extra for my friends. That's right. Plus two extra for your friends. And do you have offensive mastery? Uh, model may add up to one dice. I have offensive mastery. So one. five dice, dropping whichever one you want to not have. And I'm hit on sixes. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh no. Uh, nine, one, not and a great seven. set of dice. So, so drop the one. Uh, so it's still two hits. Uh, and two hits will kill me because I am one slash two. You can only earn one from killing my. Uh, my whatchamacallit, my specialists, but you've now killed three models, which means I lose another morale point. That takes me to zero, and that will end the game, as you've shown you have the superior 10 rolling specialists, <laughs> um, and also you've managed to murderize three guys. That will finish the round um, with one, two, oh, sorry. Actually, no, I'm only down two morale. You've killed one specialist for one, and you've also, because he doesn't give you an additional one, and you've also and killed three, three guys. So, so I'm, a, I'm a one morale left, actually. That's right. Uh, which means we actually tied initiative. <laughs> that's uh, right. That's okay. We'll, 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 we'll just keep going from here. Um, but I get another activation, um, and I'm activated out. So you actually oh, I killed the unactivated uh, person. get to go one more time, and then we're done. All right. So we have this wrath or come over and do some uh, do some business. Kill my leader. All right. So even though it is a, he has that magic ability that could throw a bolt and that could bounce around. Yep. He's actually got a decent close combat strength. Their close combat hit two, so I'm gonna take that. So you're within six for sure from that corner, so you yep. can just walk into me. Roar, roar. Mm. And go murderize. All right, now I only had two dice, but they do have Sundering and Knockback. So when right. I hit you, I'm gonna send you bouncing. So I am, I, I do, Sundering will turn my six into a strike, so you hit me on a six or more. And I've only got two wounds left. Three and one, so that's, that's gonna be miss. a backlash and a dodge. So which, I, I missed completely, uh, which I'm actually glad that I didn't do the magic strike because I would have just taken a hit. That's right. Uh, unless you, yeah, that's right. Unless you uh, well, I've taken a die worth of attack. Yep. Uh, however, knockback two. Before results are generated, uh, each enemy targeted by this attack is forced two inches away. And I'll get pushed into my friends. And if that enemy's movement is stopped by another model, the model stopping it suffers a one die attack. Map. So into my scores are there, and she's fine because it's just a dodge. So it's going to go back to like that. All right, and that's turn because I don't get to activate again. So it's over to you. Uh, and me for an initiative roll, and I'm actually at plus two this time because I'm not <laughs> at, at, I'm not at two. I'm not at one morale, and I thought I was. Um, but I, again, it's relevant, so, this, so this I go to a works. six. All right, <laughs> uh, and we'll pack activate. So I have to literally kill your boss right now, or I can't win the game. So I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to come try and be the comeback kid. Um, I am going to have this skirmisher go, and she's going to go seven, and go engage your Hakar. I'm going to have my Alpha go and go seven and try and engage your Hakar. And then he's not gonna be able to fit, so the Alpha's just gonna go to here so that he can get to base to base and do an assist. And we're just gonna try and murder your Hakar. So All right. three dice, four, five for her attacks, six for the assist, and we'll see if I can kill you. You are resistance one with three wounds, and that means I need to roll. I have, this is where the, um, the unrelenting, not unrelenting, the fall through is super handy because you have block on your profile, mm -hmm. which means I'll hit on sevens here. I need to cause three hits to kill you. So sevens, oh. I get a nine, a seven, and an overpower, That's a lot which of is hits. a total of four hits to your one three. One three, so the Hakar She's out, does she have any kind of final strike or anything? She does not. That I, I think she does. She does, because she's got because she was killed with part of something that had a, uh, Overpower. That's right. So I get one last swing. If you overpower me, we tie because we both go to zero at the same time. Oh, come on. Roll a 10, kill my alpha. Uh, do I, <laughs> hang on. So is it one? I know I can attack with one of my melee dice. Oh, you better. one of my melee attacks. So I get both. So you get two and, and you get your offensive, offensive mastery. mastery. Just get a 10. Just get a 10 right now. Tie the game. Oh, but as you get seven and nine. Two hits. 
Oh my gosh, you just killed me. Because <laughs> I hit on sevens. So, so my alpha goes down too. Blah! And we both go to zero at the same time because I killed a one rank leader and I got my assassination for an additional one and I've killed three models now, I think. Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't have killed three models. Killed three I models. have to finish my activation. So these guys killed somebody, so they get to both move and make a one die melee attack. I have to kill one of these guys now. All right, here we go. To do this. Otherwise, you're going to win the game. So let's see what happens. Nope. And... Four is a dodge. Ten? Ten is an overpower. And that's going to finish it because that actually and clears the I'll activation. I'll take my swing just to see if something good happens. We are, to we are together. I did not kill you in return. <laughs> However, I still die. Um, that may not actually be the case because I think as soon as one of us goes to zero, the game ends. I'm pretty sure it's instant death. Well, it's just because they act with certainty. That's right. No, no, I mean, for, for you took me to zero before I went to zero. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So I think okay. actually you still win the game here, but um, the. I, know, uh, I, would, I would always say that you finish I, out your activation. I, I, I would finish out my. Well, it's, it's more fun to see if we actually tied. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you're the game designer. What actually happens? Uh, in this case, because it was all, you know, one cinematic moment with the activation, I right. would definitely let them finish out the activation and then and we then calculate and be dead. Okay, so there we go. So we've tied, and that's the end of the game. So there we go, another Let's Play. You get to check out the battle at Ravenwood starter sets between the Garitzi and House Nazir. Big thanks to Brian for helping me out and shooting the Let's Play here at Kumi uh, Expo 2017. Uh, you guys have so much more Wrath of Kings coming. Uh, there's going to be four different skirmish games as all the guys at the co-op uh, and the friends of the co-op started starting to play Wrath of the Kings. Um, and then we've already started recording some, um, sorry, some patrol games. We've already started recording some skirmish games too. So you've got Wrath of the Kings coming to you guys well into August right now. Um, it's gonna be super exciting. And we're actually, we're all super jazzed about it too. The game gets really interesting when you start mixing all the motivations, um, combining all kinds of new models, different ranks of specials and different leaders too. So uh, lots of new stuff on the horizon for it as well. Yeah. You guys have showcased some new stuff actually at the expo. We did. We had a panel that showed some cool things, and uh, there's obviously you know minis in the horizon. Uh, we've got some other interesting things. You might be able to show some people some uh, the alternate cards that came it's out. Going to be some uh, cool alternate cards. That's right. That we got at the weekend. expo, um, and they'll be in some future battle reports too. So thanks you guys for watching. Thanks to Brian for the help. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thunder Mash. Happy gaming.